Okay, good luck with her. Oh, everyone broke. We're we're live already, Mitch. I think maybe just. Nope. I led you. I led you. It's just because Mitch is really loud. This room is very bright. Good morning. We're so glad to have you at Center United Methodist Church in Welcome, North Carolina. Thank you for joining us. Today, 2,000 years ago, Jesus came into Jerusalem and the rest of the week would make redemption history as the Lord would reach out to touch our lives in a way that the world could never imagine. You know, folks, uh, if you come to church uh, in, in the church in America, you come to, to uh, Palm Sunday, you celebrate Jesus coming into Jerusalem, you show up, Sunday morning, and they're celebrating Easter. What in the world happened in between? Holy Week is that great time that we look back and remember where Jesus died on the cross for us, the sins of the world. And we'll be celebrating communion today as, we, as well as when we preach, we're going to be centering on the cross and the events that took place uh, before Jesus would die for us. If you have an opportunity this week, we hope you can come be with us uh, we'll have a drive-in communion service, drive-through. You just come in at noon on Thursday, just come by, you receive the elements, we'll give you a blessing. Hope you can do that. If you feel comfortable, come Thursday night to the Monday Thursday service. The choir has worked on a great uh, service of, of, of symbolism and, and music and the Word being preached, so it's going to be a great night for us. And then Easter... Uh, we'll be in all the services celebrating the power of the resurrection. We'll begin at 7 a.m. at the cemetery for a great service, so it should be a good time. So let's pray together. Father, we just welcome you here to this place. Come, O oh Father. Bless us and touch us. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, good morning, everybody. Please stand as we begin in our worship this morning. the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life. That I would be. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory, who rules the with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you Jesus, 
you may be seated. The amazing grace of God's love. Isn't it wonderful to share that and to celebrate what God's done for us? Today we want to lift up some uh, folks in our, in, in our church. Let's continue to remember Tony Leonard as Tony had a valve replacement. We want to remember him. He and Phyllis. Let's remember he's a caregiver as well. We want to remember Gavin and, and, and uh, and Stacy and Tony and Gracie in your prayers. Let's remember Mary Sue Martin as Mary Sue has suffered a stroke this week and let's pray for her recovery. Let's pray for Martha Varner. Martha is in the Abbott's Creek. Uh, she broke a hip. We need to remember her. If anyone knows her number, if you're watching, I lost her number and I really would like to get in contact with her. So if anybody knows her, Martha or her daughters and could give me a number. I, I would really appreciate it. Let's remember Darlene and James Thompson in your prayers. Let's remember Renee Bailey. Let's remember Mark Bean as he had surgery about a couple of weeks ago. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just stop and pause to, to just reflect upon your goodness. And Lord, we've named names this morning of, of people and circumstances that need Your help and they need Your healing. There's others, Lord, that we couldn't name that need deliverance. There's others, Lord, that have habits that need to be set free, to be broken, the chains that are binding them. They, they need deliverance, Lord, we pray for that. There's others, Lord, bound by fear. And they can't live for being so scared. Lord, we, we pray for those people. We pray for people that are at home that have been isolated for some time and, and look, God, their hearts, they're lonely. We lift them up to You. We pray for those, Lord, at our home watching today that that sacred space has become their sanctuary for this period of time. We pray indeed that they would experience You in that place. To know that they're not alone, that You're with them. Thank You that You're here with us as we gather in this sanctuary. Come, Lord Jesus, and reign in our lives. You know what we need. And we ask for Your help to make us to look more like You. And we ask all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. At this time, we'll return to God His tithe and our offerings. 
Those of you at home, if you'd like to give to the work at Center Church, uh, all you have to do is go online to Center Church. Welcome. And you can drop us, uh, you can go into the icon on the uh, computer screen for Center Church and you can make a donation if you'd like to do that way or you can send, send it to, to the church address at 186 Center Church Road in Lexington. So we'd love to, love to have you be a part of this work. Thank you so much for joining us today. Standing here in your presence in a grace so relentless, I am one by perfect love, wrapped within the arms of heaven in a peace that lasts forever, sinking deep in mercy. Drawing closer by grace and all my heart is yours. All fear removed, I breathe you in and lean into your love. Oh, your love. When I'm lost, you pursue me Lift my head to see your glory Lord of all So beautiful Here in you I find shelter Captivated by the splendor of your face My secret place I'm wide awake Drawing close to it by grace and all my heart is yours. All fear moves, I breathe you in, I lean into is all I seek. You are my everything. Jesus Christ, you are my one desire. Lord, hear my only cry to know you all my life. Your love so deep is washing over me. Your face is all I seek. You are my If you have your Bibles and would turn with me to, to Mark's Gospel, the 15th chapter. Hey, thank you all. Are we not blessed to have this great team to lead us in worship each Sunday morning? Can we thank the Lord for them? Thank you. If you have your Bibles, Mark chapter 15, I want to read beginning with verse 33. Jesus has already gone through a mock trial. Jesus has already, uh, charges have been, he's been lied about. 
Uh, he's, the crowds have turned to despise him as they welcomed him into Jerusalem. They're welcoming him. He's this great deliverer. He's going to be a political figure that's going to be everything that they had hoped for to be set free from Roman rule. And so they're welcoming him in. But a sh few short days later, the crowds are ready to crucify him. They, the charges now have been brought up by the Jewish authorities. They've lied about who this Jesus is. They've even turned the charges now toward Rome that he, he thinks he's, they're saying he thinks he's some sort of emperor that's going to overcome the empire. So everybody's mad at Jesus. I was just talking to Todd. We were talking just a moment ago before, the, before I got back up to preach. We were talking about dealing with people. And I said, you know, if you didn't have to deal with people, it was people that put Jesus on the cross. It was me, a people, that put him on the cross. Folks just like you, our sins put him on the cross. I want you to hear the text. And if you would, stand in reverence for the reading of God's Word. Hear what he says. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And when some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. And now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down. And with a loud voice, a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, Surely this man was the Son of God. And some women were watching from a distance. Among them was Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, the younger and the, of Joseph, and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were there also. This is the Word of God for you, the people of God. Father, thank You that You died for the sins of the world. And Your, your text reminds us, Your Word reminds us that today. Lord, open our minds and hearts to You. God, may we give our heart to You today. If we haven't done that, may we, may we do that. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. In the Bible, darkness, darkness is synonymous with sin and death. Amos had prophesied that at noon there would be darkness upon the earth, even though there was light, there would be darkness. If you remember back with Pharaoh, with the, the very last plague that was going to be brought before the, uh, upon Egypt, the death of the firstborn children, darkness came before the plague. Darkness. It's ironic that, that Jesus, when He's born, He is the light of the world. Now, darkness as He's hanging on this cross. From noon to three o'clock, Jesus takes on the sins of the whole world. He takes my sin upon Himself. He takes every human being that would ever be born. He takes their sin upon Himself. He, as He hangs on that cross, He is completely isolated. Listen to what some of the, the different apostles write. This is what Peter says about, about Jesus. 1 Peter 2.24 Speaking of Jesus, He Himself bore our sin in His body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By His wounds you have been healed. In 2 Corinthians, Paul says, 2 Corinthians 5.21, God made Him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin for us. That's what all this is about. In fact, Paul would say in Galatians that He became the curse for us. The curse of the law was upon Him and He became a curse. He became the curse. He carried all that sin. That's why Jesus is, hangs on the cross. Darkness falls upon the earth because God can no longer look on the face of sin. Think on that for a minute. He's isolated from holy God. He cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? As he breathes out his last. In these last moments of his life, he is so alone for some three hours 
Jesus dies all alone, my friends, so you and I will never have to be alone. That you and I will never have to face that kind of darkness. That we'll never have to face that kind of tragedy. Jesus took all that upon Himself. That's what this great Jesus is all about. He takes our sin upon Himself. He delivers us. He sets us free. He takes our sin penalty upon Himself. That's what Jesus did for us. Isn't that marvelous? And He did it for the whole world. In an age where the the popular word is, no matter what you do, what you say, is the word is, you're racist. We just throw that word out randomly now. Everything in the world. Racism, racism. My friends, the Bible says that neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male or female, there's none of that with Jesus. We're all equal. In fact, as He's hanging on the cross, there's this inside the temple. In fact, the the scene switches from irreligious, from hatred, gall, being despised at Calvary, back to the scene of religion, redemption. There's this great veil that separates the Holy of Holies and the temple. We're not sure how big that is. We know it's about 30 foot high, so, and I can't remember how wide it is, but it's 30 foot uh, tall. So this is a woven fabric, so it's quite a weight to it. It's not going to be easily torn, but, but Matthew says there's an earthquake. Now Mark doesn't tell us that. He just says that the veil of the temple's torn. It's opened up. And that literally is saying that in this moment of darkness, this Jesus has made a way that we can all go into the Holy of Holies. And in and, and the Jewish setting, to go and worship the Lord in the temple, the women were way out here. They couldn't come close. The Gentiles way out there, they couldn't come close. The Jewish men, they could come a little closer, but still there's this, there's this, there's this great veil, this great curtain that exists. And the priest stood on the other side of that curtain. And once a year, the curtain was open, and they walked into the Holy of Holies and made sacrifices. One day a year, on the great Day of Atonement. In fact, it was such a special time that they tied a a rope around that priest, and they brought it, he came in, and so if he died, they put bells on him so you could hear him moving around behind this this curtain. But if he died, they'd had to pull him out because no one could have come back in to retrieve the body. This is how precious this altar is, the Holy of Holies. Jesus' death, that, that's torn in two. Jesus has made a way now that men, women, people of every age, of every race, of every culture can come into His presence. Isn't that marvelous? The religion's dead now. Religion's dead. It's now about a relationship with the Holy God and the Holy Father who's made a way for us. This is what all this is about. Again, if you, you just come to church on, uh, and you never did read the Bible before, you, you just showed up, randomly showed up, Palm Sunday. And they, they're running around with the palm branches. I don't know if we're going to do that this year or not, but we've got the palm branches, waving them. Th- I always thought that was the biggest waste of money, but you wave them old palm branches. And while I'm at it, they throw this, they spray them with stuff. It makes my eyes swell up. So I never did care a whole lot about them. So they got all this old stuff. They're slinging this old grass around. And that's the way they did when Jesus strode in. The little kids, they got the palm branches out. If you'd come down south, they'd had the pine branches out. Welcome him in. Laid him down on the road. So this Jesus come in on this little donkey. He strode across them. Welcoming a king. Right, that's beautiful. Because they think this Jesus is going to come in and set them free from Roman rule and oppression. They've been so dominated. You know the Jewish history. They're, they're run over by everybody in the world. Look where Israel is. The Assyrians would pour down upon them. The Egyptians would come upon them. So just, they're constantly trampled on. It's the highway that they're trampled on. Everybody has to go through Jerusalem to go north or south. So everybody's trampled on them because the Sea of Galilee is on the other side. So here's all the stuff. Jesus makes a way. Jesus makes a way that you and I can go into His presence. The veil's torn back. Doesn't matter who you are. You and I can talk to him. Had somebody today ask me about, how, how, do, you, how do you, a little kid asked me about talking to God. Uh, how do you call him? And I said, you just say Jesus. And, then, and this little fellow knew that. 
But isn't that marvelous? Just Jesus. That's all you got to do. Jesus. It's not anything complicated. You don't have to get a book down or a manual. You know, if there's stuff that happens in an aircraft, they have to start getting out their books. You've seen those movies about planes are going to go down, they start getting the books out, trying to read and figure out what's going on with the plane, the aircraft. You don't have to do that. You don't have to get a book out. You don't even have to get the Bible out. You just say, Jesus. And He shows up. Because sometimes we don't have time to do all this other stuff. Just Jesus. Jesus, help me. And He shows up. He made a way that all of us could come in. He made a way for, for women who could not at that time in that culture could come in. He made a way. In fact, it's ironic that in the story he mentions again all these women that was a part of the story. Didn't matter what your culture, you could come in. Didn't matter what religion you were, you were, you were in. You could still come into him. You see, you come into Jesus, he changes the heart and you begin to worship the whole new way. It changes it all. It's not about you straightening it out and then, then I'm going to come into it. No, no, you come in first to Him. You come in first. Jesus loves you so much. My friends, you're watching from home. Don't get caught up on all this stuff that's happening in our world that isolates us, that separates us. Jesus came to bring us together. To bring us together. That we could all come into the presence of the Holy God. He died so that we wouldn't be abandoned. He died to be the light of the world that when the times are darkest, He turns the light on for us. He made a way for us to have hope. This Jesus. And then got all that story going on. That's great stuff, isn't it? But in the midst of that, then you, then you got a cruel soldier getting those old vinegar to give... Uh, let's see this show. They're saying that Elijah might show up when this, this is going on. Maybe Elijah's going to show up. Let's keep him alive a little longer so they get a sponge and dip it in, 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 in vinegar and it. hold it up to Jesus' mouth. He's not way up high, by the way. And by the way, Golgotha is not somewhere off the beaten path. When Rome dealt out capital punishment, they put the crosses on main highways. There was a reason for that. They, if, if they had been still doing crucifixions today, you'd be watching it on television. There was a reason that they did that. Because this guy, Jesus, is guilty not only of these religious charges, but claiming to be God Almighty. I mean, that's, that's, Rome don't care about that. But it's the fact that he thinks he's over the emperor. That's what got them all tore up. Guilty of insurrection. And so they want everybody to know, you, you talk against Rome, you're going to pay a price. And so they put you right on the main road. And the cross is you're barely above the ground. I mean, and they put you where everybody can see you. You're visible to anybody that comes along. And by the way, the people came because they love to see it. Just like the, you've seen the movies in the Old West when somebody was hung. That's a big thing, folks. People, it's, and now we do it in NASCAR. We go to see a big wreck. So we go sit and watch the big wreck, right? You ever notice you're going up the interstate, you're going westbound, uh, the traffic stopped on eastbound, but for some reason, there's nobody broke down on the west, but we got to stop. Because we're looking to see a wreck. We're looking to see some human tragedy. And we've all got to turn our heads and look. And that's what they were doing with Jesus. And Jesus is hanging on that cross. He's breathing out his last moments of life for three hours. He... He's isolated from God. He's, he's hanging literally the guilt of the world upon him. Have you ever really felt guilty for something you've done? You know you did it. You, you know you were guilty. But the guilt's so strong on you. I mean, you're just, it's a sickening feeling. Can you imagine compounding that by the millions? That's what Jesus is carrying. He who knew no sin has become sin for us. And is he dying on that cross? This old soldier lifts this old vinegar up. Let's keep him alive a little longer. Maybe Elijah will show up and take him down. We can just see this show. When all that's carrying out, there's a hardened Roman soldier, a centurion, looking on. Now this, this centurion is probably the same centurion. Now he would have been over many soldiers. He could have been over as many as a hundred or he could have been over a hundred. It, it was just a title. And so this, this, this 
leader of, of soldiers, the centurion, is looking on. He has been through all kind of political campaigns. He's been through all kind of unrest. He's seen war. He's seen battles. And that's why they trust him. And he's watching all this. Play. He's hearing all this stuff. Matthew tells us that there's a little bit more takes place. Matthew says that at one point he raises himself up. Literally, he would have been able to do that. He had pushed himself up so that he could have breathed just a little better because all that weight, he would have pushed himself up from that little saddle thing that's on the back end of him and, and then from his feet, he had pushed himself up just a little bit to try to get that pressure off so he could have breathed a little better. He says, it's finished. And says, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Now, it's finished doesn't mean it's finished what they've done to him. He's, it's finished in that his act of redemption is finished. He's done what he's come to do. And this Roman soldier is watching all this, this, this centurion. Not the one with the sponge, but the centurion. In fact, he would have been the one that was probably responsible for Jesus from the time the charges had been brought up against him. And when he was handed into the Romans' hands for judgment, Pilate would have, this would have been the man who had been watching him. He had looked over him. Because he couldn't just let him go because they're going to kill him. Capital punishment's a big deal. And they didn't want anything else to happen to him. If anybody's going to kill you, the state's going to kill you, right? And so they would have been protecting him. And this soldier would have been responsible to see him come to that place. He would have also been responsible, or at least had men responsible for looking after Jesus' body when he was still in that tomb. So a lot of responsibility raced on this dude. And what does he say? It's the most profound act of faith in the Scripture. All through the Gospels, nobody knows who Jesus is. If you notice that, they don't really know. The, 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 the apostles, the, the disciples, they're kind of getting it figured out, but they still don't have it all figured out. They're trying to make Jesus into whatever image they can make him, so they're still trying to figure this stuff out. And so that takes place. The demons in the Bible knows who he is. That's, that's interesting. They all recognize who Jesus is. But here's a soldier. And as Jesus is breathing out his last, what does he say? Surely, this was the Son of God. Wow. Wow, he sees it like no other theologian sees it. He's the Son of God. He doesn't understand it all. And Jesus breathes his last and dies. And the darkness would go away. Matthew chapter 27 says that there's some other great things happen. There's darkness upon the earth. There's an earthquake. And not only the earthquake happens, what else happens? The graves open up. Now we don't think about that much, but the graves open up and these folks go walking back into town. And so people know there's, there's other people alive. This is, you talking about zombie time, this is it. So there's some wild stuff happening. Because this one who's dying is bringing life. And you and I will see it Easter morning, the rest of the story. Can you say surely this is the Son of God in your life? That He is the one who takes away the veil of darkness that allows me to come into His presence. No matter who I am, I can come into His presence. Not because of who I am, but because of whose I am, because of what He's done for me. Wow, my friends, that's what this meal is all about that we're about to partake. We're going to celebrate communion this morning. We're going to, as they'll come up, they'll just come on up as they're making their way. We're going to have a prayer. Father, God, our needs are great. We've heard your gospel all over again. Father, there is no way we can go to heaven apart from you. God, Thank you that you made that way for us today. Somebody's watching, somebody here today, some young person is thinking about this. May they just say, Jesus, save me. And find your grace is sufficient. Lord, we pray that you touch this, this grape juice and, and this bread, that it would come for us, the body and blood of Christ. We thank you for all that you've done for us. And may your Holy Spirit rest upon it, that by our partaking it, it, this by, by first by, by us just that by your Holy Spirit's work, transform it to the body and blood of Christ, and by our taking it, we would become the 
body and blood of Christ for a broken world. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hey, could you give me one verse? As they're handing these out this morning, uh, I'm going to ask that you hold them. And uh, then we're going we're gonna to all eat them together, okay? You can take the top part off. It's, it's the bread. It's a little wafer. And then you got to work to get the juice off. So if you'd kind of do that. And uh, the body of Christ given for you. Cups a little harder to get over. Don't get it all over you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Thank you for coming today.
thank you so much for this day and God as we go into this week please just remind us and allow us to feel the great mercy and grace far beyond we deserve that you have given us um, allow us to come back safely next week to celebrate you know the rising of Jesus from the dead God and it's in your name we pray amen all right, thank you so much for joining us this morning and have a great week.